Malvina Goldfield is uh, the head of business development for Africa for a little company, a little startup started by a South African. You might have heard of it. It's called PayPal. Yes? Anyone know about Elon Musk? I remember trying to sell the story. I was a newspaper reporter to an editor, and I said to them, listen, there's a South African who's done this thing called PayPal, and it uses eBay, and it's micropayments, and they go, micropayments, eBay, you know. Who knew such great stuff would come out of Pretoria? And uh, Malvina's going to tell us why. <laughs> no, really. I mean, apart from Victor Matfield, what else has Pretoria produced that we can be proud of? <laughs> I rest my case. The baton of power is yours. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here. And if there's anything I want you to take away from PayPal at Tech for Africa, other than our free, oops, our free coffee, which I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> we, we know how to make our customers happy. Uh, those would be two messages. So the first one, accelerate mobile. So what we're seeing across all of our merchants all around the world is that the share of sales that comes from mobile devices is constantly growing. Um, in Europe over the past year, we've seen growth of 30 to 40, sometimes even 50% from the previous year in sales that generate from mobile phones. So when I'm saying mobile, I don't even include tablets here. It's just mobile phones. So what does that mean for e-commerce? It means that you must have mobile websites. So you must have the mobile site, you must have mobile checkout, because a lot of your customers won't have a good shopping experience on a regular site on their mobile phone. Um, and of course, that works great with PayPal because our checkout experience is completely mobilized when people use PayPal from the mobile device. And so the checkout is extremely simple. They don't need to put in their credit card details. They don't need to put in a shipping address. Everything is already stored in their PayPal account. So all they need to put in is their password, and then, uh, and then the sale goes through. What it means for the merchant is a lot more completed sales and obviously higher revenues. Um, so this is, I'm actually not going to expand a lot on, on this part, but it's just we're seeing such clear trends all around the world that I wanted to highlight that. Um, the second message that I will spend more time on is the following, cross-border trade. And a lot has been said here about building um, companies in South Africa, building companies for Africa. But I would actually like to take it one step further and saying what the internet allows us to do is to connect the world. So it doesn't matter where you are, your customers can be anywhere in the world. And um, if you're looking at the growth potential of internet and where the new users are coming from, a lot of them are coming from emerging markets. So Africa, India, Latin America, Russia, all of these markets are markets that are growing fast and, and there's a great opportunity to build new companies in these areas. We're seeing a huge acceleration in cross-border trade, including in our EMEA region, which is Europe, Mid Europe Middle East and Africa. And so in, in this slide, you can see just, um, just the amount of growth in trade uh, that goes to Germany. So these are, this, this is growth in imports to Germany coming from different markets in one year. So in one year, there was a uh, growth of 32% in, uh, in trade from China, 46% from France. You can see the numbers are all in the high 30s and sometimes up to 50%. Um, at the same time, Experts from Germany have been growing at least as fast. So 75% go growth in exports to Russia, 28% uh, going to Australia. And I think that's actually an interesting example because I think a lot of times people would say, well, South Africa is far, shipping is expensive, it takes a long time. But if you can ship from Germany to Australia in three days, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't happen with South Africa as well. So when you're seeing all these numbers in cross-border trade, I think... You know, this is something to pay attention to. So why, why, are, people, why are people shopping cross-border? Why don't you just buy on websites in your own country? So there are a number of reasons for that. The first one is a big one, choice and availability. So people are looking for a variety of things which often they cannot find um, in, in their own country or where they live. Uh, this is one example of one of our merchants from the UK, Firebox. Uh, whose slogan is, the coolest things you can buy. Um, and you may not want the world's first Wi-Fi kettle, because I'm not sure what you actually do with it. 
but they do have a lot of very, very cool items on there and they ship worldwide. So choice and availability, a big one. The second reason that people shop cross-border is better total price, and I'm emphasizing total because it includes shipping. So Deal Extreme is one of our Chinese merchants. It's one of our biggest uh, Chinese merchants. It's, um, they sell gadgets and electronics. Um, and from a survey that we've, we've done, up to 65% of our consumers shop cross-border because they just find cheaper stuff. Um, and on average, it's 16% savings. That's by a survey that's done by the European Commission. Um, so cheaper, more availability. Um, also to feel smart and unique. So in May this year, uh, Time Magazine came out with the Me, Me, Me generation um, slogan. And that's basically, you know, the young generation, it's very important for them to feel unique. So they're looking for things that not all of their friends have. And that's, that's another big reason why they shop cross-border. Finally, this is actually one of our favorite South African merchants, uh, Net Florist, which, uh, which I think you should know. Um, so Net Florist sells a lot cross-border because South Africans who live in other countries, in Australia, in the UK, or in the US, they send flowers and gifts to their family and friends um, in South Africa. So 5% of people shop cross-border because they're buying gifts for their friends and family who live abroad. Some more examples for cross-border transactions uh, from our own uh, merchants. So Singita, it's a, it's a luxury lodge, safari lodge chain uh, throughout South Africa, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Tanzania. Um, they bill a lot of their, a lot of our customers who come from Europe and the US um, with PayPal, and it works very well. Um, another one is Mr. Price, uh, which is one of our uh, new merchants as well. Mr. Price now ships globally and they have very attractive prices and very cool uh, range of clothing. So today they use PayPal in order to, to sell all around the world. So these are some of the examples of, of cross-border trade and, and why people shop cross-border. Um, now you may want to ask, it still, still kind of sounds pretty complicated, right? So don't people have concerns? What are the problems when you shop cross-border? So the main concerns that, that customers cite are around shipping, payment security, and delivery, which I think you know a lot of us resonate with, with these issues. So long delivery times, 61% of, of our customers say that it's a problem when they shop cross-border, uh, shipping costs. Um, so th that's the kind of the shipping bucket. That's something that you always need to, uh, to take into account, of course, when you sell cross-border. The second one is payment security. That, of course, resonates with PayPal. So as a, as a customer, your, your payment details are completely secure. Your, the merchant doesn't receive any of your financial information when you shop with PayPal. Um, and finally, non-delivery. So uh, you want to make sure that the merchant that you buy from will actually deliver your goods and will refund you in case they don't arrive. So um, this is actually something else that PayPal does. We have buyer and seller protection. So if, if the item that you ordered hasn't arrived, you will receive a refund through PayPal. So I'm just going to give you one example of, of an international merchant that grew an incredible business um, out of the UK. So it's uh, ASOS, um, global fashion brand. So just some of the elements that ASOS used in becoming the, the huge brand that it is today. So first of all, really deciding that going global is what they want to do. So, because that changes entirely your, your strategy going forward with business. So ASUS wanted to become the number one fashion destination by 20-somethings. So young fashion all around the world. Um, in order to do that, you have to deliver worldwide, and ASUS are doing it amazingly well. So you can see within Europe, they can deliver in two to four days. Um, they deliver in five days to Australia, which is quite remarkable. Um, and that's really four to five days is, is how long it takes them to deliver almost anywhere in the world. Um, another element to consider, of course, is whether you need to localize your website and, and your operations. So, um, so some of the things to, to consider in terms of localization is delivery options and returns. So just like previously, um, I was sharing you know, the shipping worldwide, very fast, very efficient. Uh, the second one is payment methods. So when you sell in different countries, you have to make sure to that you accept the payment methods that customers in, in that country use. 
So that's another element that needs to be considered. PR and marketing, uh, acquiring customers is, uh, is always a challenge and definitely more of a challenge when, when you're trying to sell in markets you don't know as well. So you may want to consider hiring a local team, um, hiring um, local PR agencies, etc., who will know how to build your brand in those markets. Um, localization, so website, you know, if, if most of your customers come from Germany, you should probably have a German website. You may want to need, um, you may need a, a German customer care agent who will answer their questions and issues in, in German. Um, and finally, mobilization, like the first point that I mentioned earlier, um, you want to make sure, especially selling in Europe or the US, but again, it's, it's actually a global phenomena that you need to have a mobile website and mobile checkout process to make sure you're not losing those customers who are browsing your website from the mobile device. Um, another element to consider is to define your market and which market you're going after and why. So what is your competitive advantage and where can you use it best? So for ASOS, they defined uh, the UK, Australia, US, France, and Germany as their strategic markets. And the second tier of markets that has actually quite a few developing and emerging markets in it is uh, China, Russia, India. So, so these are all fast-growing markets where they want to build a brand places where e-commerce is still young but, but growing, maybe similarly to Africa, and finally the rest of the world. The results speak for themselves. They're the second most visited um, apparel website in the world. So they have today almost a million daily visitors to their website. So that's, uh, that's it for my slides. I wanted to leave some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please. No questions? E-commerce in Africa, yeah? Yeah, please go ahead. Do you all work hard to make it easier for um, African merchants to be able to use PayPal, say, to receive payments? Because I know one of the issues, I live in Tanzania, is being able to take money out of a PayPal account and bring it into a Tanzanian bank account. So say we could make money, but it has to stay in PayPal. Um, so it's really, mm -hmm. it kind of blocks us from using it as a payment mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's a really good point. So, so what we're doing uh, in Africa today, so we started a first partnership with a financial institution in Africa with FNB Bank here in South Africa. So through FNB Bank, you can now receive and withdraw funds to any local South African bank account. Uh, all you need to do is to open up an online profile uh, with FNB. So, so that's for South Africa. Um, in two weeks, we'll be announcing a new partnership and having a formal launch event in Nairobi, and that's for a second African partnership with Equity Bank um, of Kenya. So as of now, Kenyan merchants can also receive and withdraw funds to, a, to an Equity Bank account in Kenya. Um, so that's, those are very exciting news. And uh, we're definitely planning to continue these kind of partnerships and expand it um, throughout Africa. So it's, it's, the process takes some time since financial services are a tricky industry with a lot of regulations. So, you know, it's, uh, but we're, we're definitely, it's, it's very high up in our priorities um, for Africa going forward. Okay, thank you, that's a great talk. Can people raise money through PayPal? Do you have any, any plans for crowdfunding? accepting payments? Uh, great question. So we don't have a particular scheme for crowdfunding. We do have a lot of NGOs that use PayPal for their fundraising, uh, but it's not specific to crowdfunding as of yet. Yes, over there. Um, or. I wanted to find out what's the process that you follow when it comes to uh, non-delivery of products. How do you uh, know for sure that it was not delivered in in, in order to uh, refund the person? It's, it's often difficult to know for sure, but you know, for us, the customer is always right. So uh, one of the benefits of a PayPal system is that it's a closed network. So we have the merchant's accounts as well as the customer's accounts within our network. So if the customer complains that they haven't received uh, the shipment, then the merchant will not receive the funds and the customer will be, um, will be reimbursed. So we're very, very strong on the customer protection. You know, of course, if we, be, again, because it's a closed system, we also have a track record of all of these sort of incidents. So, 
if you have a customer that continuously, for some reason, doesn't receive their shipment, uh, we will look into that and, and inquire further to see what's, what's really going on. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, PayPal is not the cheapest that you can find, but we provide a lot of value-add services um, for that price. So PayPal actually has probably the most sophisticated anti-fraud mechanism uh, worldwide. Our rejection fees are far lower than those of credit cards. So, um, you know, and that costs money. <laughs> um, so the fraud mechanism, the insurance that you get in terms of buyer protection and seller protection, um, all of these things make it more expensive. Um, however, what we're seeing with a lot of our merchants, or you know, the reason why they keep us there and don't, because you can always you can always take PayPal off if it's not working for you. But almost all of our merchants are seeing immediate sales uplift as soon as they integrate PayPal. So your increased revenues sort of make up for the higher rate that you pay for PayPal transactions. Um, I have a question about developer friendliness because I tried to. Well, I've worked with the PayPal API quite a bit. And my experience is that, um, okay, there's a lot of competition in the e-commerce integration space, you know. So, you, so in other words, people that can take credit cards on behalf of your, your site. And uh, my experience is that the, the PayPal API is probably more towards the more developer and friendly. You know, it's, it's pretty complicated to integrate with PayPal API. So, um, yeah, I was just hoping to hear, you know, what, what is your roadmap for the developer API specifically? Um, and what's changing in that space? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the integration, how easy it is, really depends on, on the mode that you're using. You know, for, for a simple PayPal integration, it is actually, it is actually quite simple and, and you know, it, can take, it can take a matter of hours until you can accept payments with PayPal on your website. Um, also, if you're using any of the large PSPs, um, the payment platforms, many of them already have PayPal integrated, so you just have to kind of click a button and, and you have PayPal on your site. Uh, having said that, PayPal is aware, you know, PayPal has been around for quite a long time, so uh, we're an older company than some of the new startups coming up, and so there's a lot of work that's being done today to operate, uh, to operate our product. So our new, our new CEO, uh, David Marcus, um, he previously, s he sold his startup Zong to PayPal, and he's a very innovative startup guy, so he's bringing a lot of that spirit into PayPal. Um, the recent Braintree acquisition, I don't know how many of you followed that, but PayPal uh, acquired a couple weeks ago um, a very cool startup which uh, focuses on mobile payments um, called Braintree. And so that's, that's part of that sort of wave of making PayPal much more developer friendly, more mobile, more innovative. Last question? Or I think we're good. Great. Thank well, you very much, Malvino. Put it together.